Most of the pastures in Crooked Tree Village are bordering vast acres of forests. The remote location makes livestock easy prey for predators like jaguars. Daily monitoring is difficult and fence like this one is constructed to keep in the cattle, not to keep out wildcats. More than 15 farmers in the area have reported loss of livestock and have blamed jaguars. Well, today, one of those farmers, Wayne Wade, is getting some help in the form of jaguar tracking technology. Right here, we are, we are here to actually, we deployed two camera traps out in different areas where Mr. Wade, he recommended to us where he had seen tracks and um, to actually help us detect and see what's coming around. So the first step we do is to put the cameras around in different areas, the camera trap. These will take pictures of anything that comes around. We can know exactly if one jaguar, two jaguars, if it's a puma, um, if something else is coming around. So that's our first step we have to take before we make any further decisions. And these help us to make, the cameras pictures will actually help us to make proper decisions for what next step to take. If something does occur or attack in the, before the week or two weeks, we'll come out and check it. But usually these cameras are checked uh, every twice a month, depending on the situation, you know, the intensity of the situation of attacks and things. Um, that will help us make on decisions on where, how to check the camera, when to check it. They're easy, easily um, downloadable with a flash drive. It'll take the pictures down. And like I said, the, for Jaguars, you can actually know how much of them are there. Due to the pe their pellets, they're just like our fingerprints. Um, they, that's how you identify them. So we can count one, two, we can know if it's a male or female, things like that. Depends on what shows on the camera, those steps may include the setting of traps and removal of the wildcat by the relevant authorities. Korea says that while the Wildlife Protection Act makes provision for animals like jaguars, it also provides protection for herders and their livelihoods if threatened. Well, the act itself um, in Section 2 states that briefly, you know, um, that if an animal is affecting your life or your livelihood, you have all rights to remove it, right? As a farmer, that meaning you will go out there and set up a trap or go out of your pasture and shooting it, hunting them, that can be considered as hunting. So what they need to do if they do shoot an animal, it must have been reported before to the forest department. So we have something in place that, yes, it was affecting your livelihood. And for pastures without cameras, there are other measures that farmers and cattle herders can implement to better secure their livestock. We're still in a learning process, testing different methods around the country, especially in rural Belize. Um, but we recommend different things such as um, fencing, um, cleaning your buffer zones, these areas, having water trouts within the pasture, not having them outlay drinking in the creek, like where we set up the cameras. Lights, if possible, not everybody can have lights around. Like these farms are remote, so. Um, corralling your calves at night is really important. Small calves are main target for jaguars. So those things are, are important for us to do. I mean, breeding seasons are good too as well because you can actually know when to monitor your calves more instead of having it all through the air. You know exactly when to monitor. And if an animal is dead or wrong, um, we would recommend that they bury it or dispose of it. We don't want to be attracting jaguars around the area. Guard animals, um, buffaloes, people have been using buffaloes in Brazil, different parts of the region, like I said. In the country, we have been using um, donkeys as guard animals. The Mennonite communities have been using them. The donkeys are like alarm to the farm. They naturally sense things. Reporting for News 5, I'm Andrea Polanco.